Our guest today spent 20 years in prison, but in that time, he found out the true meaning of freedom. Please welcome David Herbedian. David, wow, thank you for being here. Oh, I'm excited about <laughs> what God's doing today. Well, this is amazing. I know you came from a family of believers, mm -hmm. uh, a Messianic Jewish mother, an Armenian father, a believer, and even your mother had a prophetic gifting. Now that didn't fall too far from the tree because even as a child, you experienced that in your own life. What happened when you were nine years old? When I was nine years old, well, if I could just wind it back a little bit, mm -hmm. when I was a young child, you know, three and four years old and five years old, when I would go to sleep at night, I would see like a ball of light would appear, soft light, at the foot of my bed, almost by the ceiling, and I felt like I had an angel watching over me. Mm. And I would even sometimes at that age, you know, talk to the, the ball of light, yes. and it didn't ever yes. talk, it never talked back to me, <laughs> but I felt the peace of God. And so I always thought that everybody had an angel when children would close the door at night, they were never alone. God will never leave us or forsake us. Mm. And when I would go out and get water in the middle of the night on occasions every few months, I'd see two men sitting on the couch in our living room. And I thought my mother and father had guests in from out of right, town. Right. And they would look up and I would think, why are they up this late at night, two, three in the morning? And they would look at me and they would wave. And I didn't realize that they were angels as well. So I grew up with supernatural experiences, but I didn't know what box to put them in. Mm -hmm. And so I would have what would we now refer to as prophetic dreams, but they would be little kid dreams mm -hmm. as God was training right, me in this right. gift. And so I would have a dream where I would lose my cards the next day, like Bugs Bunny cards, and they'd be stolen from me and I thought I would lose them. And one night I had a dream because other children at age five in kindergarten were losing their personal items. And I had a dream, there was a, a young boy there, age five, he was stealing things. He came from a, a poorer family, so he mm. was taking. Mm -hmm. And he was hiding them by this uh, uh, thermal heater, an old one in an old school. And you could kind of move it and there was a hole and he had them underneath the carpet, underneath where ah. he'd taken all these items. Mm -hmm. So I went and found them and I went and told the teacher. And when the teacher came and found them, he said, I haven't stolen these things, he did. And I was falsely accused of stealing what I had actually revealed. Because you had no logical explanation of how you knew it, right? Right, and so that kind of set the pattern. And so then I would have these dreams and they would come to pass, but I wasn't taught on how to write things down yet mm -hmm. and how to you know write the vision, make it plain upon the talus. And so what happened is I would have these dreams. I'm like, oh, I had a dream about this last night. How does this end? And then it would happen. I'd be like, that's how it ends. Or I'd announce it. It would start to end. So finally, kids began to taunt me. And specifically one girl, I ran into a, a young Jezebel type spirit mm -mm. when I was nine years old. And she was taunting me, oh, dreamer boy, dreamer boy. If you're such a dreamer, tell us the future, dreamer boy. Wow. And so I said, okay, I'm going to get the future. So I went home and I prayed really hard. I said, God, give me something <laughs> big. I went to sleep that night and I had a dream. And in the dream, it was a very bittersweet revelation. Mm. My school teacher in the third grade was going to be in a car accident on Thursday. And she was not going to show up on Friday. We were going to have a male substitute teacher, which was rare back then. And they were going to announce a new teacher on Monday. and we would then discover that our teacher had been in an accident. She would be out for the rest of the year. Yeah. And so I went and I had the vision, I had the dream, and I announced this to the people. And sure enough, Thursday's rolling around and I went to say goodbye to the teacher because I knew this would be the last time I right. would see her. Right. She didn't die in the dream. And so she's like, well, I'll see you tomorrow. I said, yeah, okay. And Friday showed up and she was in class. Uh oh. So I looked like a false prophet, mm -hmm. not a real one at age nine. And that girl with the Jezebel spirit taunted me, dreamer boy. Well, a week later, Friday showed up. And we had a male teacher. He didn't say anything. He was a substitute teacher. And on Monday, he actually became the permanent teacher for mm -hmm. the rest of the year. Our teacher had been in an auto accident. On a Thursday, as you had uh, prophetically dreamt of. Yes. yes but not the 
Thursday that I thought it would happen. Mm -hmm. And this is the, the challenge with the anointing of the sons of Issachar, that we might know the times and seasons. I had the day, but not the date. Mm -hmm. And so I was young, I made a mistake. And so now, again, instead of my prophetic gifting, furthering the plan and purpose of God, they went and told that I had some foreknowledge of the accident. Wow. So now two teachers approached me and wanted to know how I had foreknowledge of the accident of this teacher as if there had been some sort of foul play. My goodness, yes. And yes. so I did the best thing I knew how at that time. I have no idea what you're talking about. They're lying. Yeah, yeah. And I just defended myself with a lie. And I went home that night. I said, that's it, God. I don't want any more of these dreams. Mm -mm. And I wanted the prophetic gifting that God put in me shut down. And I just want to say something. If you've got prophetic gifting, it is a gift. Steward it. Get some good mentoring. Get around a prophetic group and learn how to operate in the God-given gift. God wants to raise up prophetic people, and it's yours for the asking. So you wanted to just kind of leave that there and say, Lord, I don't want any part of this. They're taunting me. They think I'm evil. Mm -hmm. You know, they're calling me names. I don't want it. Listen, I'm going to take it from here, God. You know what? I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to go into business and I'm going to mm -hmm. get money and I'm going to do all these things. And by 20, David, you were an entrepreneur. You were living the high life. You had money. You had cars, all these things. But your lifestyle was not one that would leave you safe. You told us, and this is so incredible, I said this is an incredible story, that one day you found yourself on the tarmac of a private airport and what was happening? What had happened is I owned five watch stores at the time, a wholesale company, an import company. I was worth a million on Dun & Bradstreet. I was age 24 at this point, and I was trading cocaine for stolen jet airplanes. Mm -hmm. It was our second plane of the month. And so I was arrested in Boca Raton at a private airfield with a Mercedes-Benz, a bag of cash, and a stolen <sighs> Cessna Citation 2 jet for the Colombian drug cartel. Whoa. And it was a reverse sting operation. The feds came out of planes, trains, automobiles, screwed Uzis into my ear, ruined my orange juice morning. I didn't pass go, I didn't collect $200. <laughs> I went to jail, directly to jail, and I spent the next 19 years, six months, a week and a day in federal prison. But in response to my mother's prayers, God release the hounds of heaven in my behalf. People say, well, you got arrested. No, I got rescued. The long arm oh. of the law may have reached out and apprehended me, but it was a long arm of heaven that reached out and responded to my mother's heartfelt cries and prayers. And today, if you've been praying for your mm. prodigal sons yes. and daughters, yes. God is gonna reach out with the long arm of his love and apprehend them and pull them out of substance abuse and alcohol and mm -hmm. prostitution. Mm -hmm. He's going to set the captives free because he's heard a mother's prayer. When a child at three years old calls 911, the police are dispatched in response to that child's prayer. When a mother cries out to heaven, the angels are released in a 911 moment. Yes. And they're sent to protect your children through car accidents and drug overdoses and promiscuity and pull them out. But God has covenant with you when you pray, and he will do it. Believe on the Lord Messiah, and your whole household will be saved. Acts 16, 31. Can I just say, whew, and wow. And I read your story. I studied your story. I saw how God moved in your life. And honestly, uh, the prophetic was still with you because I know we don't have to go into uh, all of that right now, but you had actually had a dream detail by detail the night before of how this was going to all go down. But you went through it anyway. But David, I know you were not in prison long before God got your attention with a full-blown miracle. Yeah, I was in Leavenworth Penitentiary in Building 63 where the Birdman of Alcatraz actually had his birds. They weren't in Alcatraz, California. They were in Leavenworth, Kansas. Where okay, let birds. me just say you heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> he was not in Alcatraz. And what happened was I was unsaved. Uh, my co-defendant, Vic, who was a chiropractor, was in a cell with me. It was an eight by 16 prison cell. About 200 cockroaches were in the wow. cell. It was so bad that the cockroaches would crawl across our bodies. And we got to the point where we were able to acclimate. Remember, we were in penthouse apartments and, and Mercedes Benz. And when we, all of a sudden we were in a 
prison house with cockroaches, and we had so acclimated ourselves that I saw my co-defendant, a cockroach went across his arm, crawled up and went across his face, and he was asleep, and when it hit his mouth, he went and it blew the cockroach onto the ground, and I thought, how far oh. have we fallen? Wow. It was a defining moment, the cockroach revelation Whoa. of how far we had Whoa. fallen. Whoa. And so, at that point, I began to really seek the Lord in my own way. Mm -hmm. And so here I am in this cell, and there's a man by the name of Shane who has five compression fractures and three blown discs in his back. Now, and Shane was a believer, right? Shane was a believer yes. that had backslid. He was actually an on-fire okay. Christian. Okay. He backslid, was in a one-car auto accident, and broke his, back. broke his back. So he had metal strips in his back brace. When you're in the hole, what's referred to as the solitary housing unit or the SHU, mm -hmm. S-H-U, they take away any hardback books, you can, use, you can use them as a weapon, mm -hmm. any sort of back brace with metal strips in them, because you can use them as a weapon. So Shane was perfectly positioned to receive a miracle from God mm -hmm. because he had nothing else left to rely on. Sometimes God perfectly positions you for a miracle that can only happen from Him, and He'll remove all the props. And if that's you right now, prepare for a miracle because he's coming, because he loves you just the way you are, but he loves you way too much to leave you in your current condition, and the suddenly and the divine turnaround is about to happen for you. So I looked at Shane mm -hmm. with these five compression fractures and three blown discs, and it had been weeks, take him two minutes to even get out of bed, and he was only 28 yeah. years old, and my co-defendant, Vic, couldn't do anything for him as a chiropractor. And Shane would listen to R.W. Shambach out of Tyler, Ooh. Texas, <laughs> faith healer. And I was unsaved, but I like to listen occasionally to R.W. Shambach. Right. He spoke to me, the storytelling and the fun. And so we had these little bitty radios, they're about $15 mm. and mm -hmm. headphones. And we'd have to lean in this prison cell with metal and cement to get signal through an AM radio station. Wow. And Shane would listen every night on his bed and R.W. Shambach would pray the prayer of faith and nothing would happen for weeks. Wow. And I finally looked and God set me up in front of a chiropractor. <laughs> and I said, God, if you're real and you're up there mm -hmm. and you can heal and you still heal today, I'm not asking for myself. I'm asking for Shane who claims to be your servant. I'm asking you to heal him. And before my eyes, Donna, I saw what was like a clear gel come over his head and slip down his shoulders. And when it hit his shoulders and his back, I heard pop, pop, crack, pop, crack, pop, pop, crack. And the five compression fractures and three blown discs were instantly healed. And he said, Vic, Dave, and he took his headphones off. I'm healed. Hallelujah. And he began speaking in tongues. I'm healed. Hallelujah. And he got up and he stood up and he bent down. And the first time his hands went to his knees, the second time they went to his, his uh, calves, the third time to his feet, and the fourth time he put his hands flat on the ground standing up. And he had more flexibility than Vic and I did. Now you had a chiropractor in the same cell with you. A licensed chiropractor yes. used to see 100 patients a week. Yes. And had examined Shane before. prior to. Yes. And 30 minutes before Shane got healed. Let me tell you what Vic said. He said, Shane, you have the back of an 80 year old man that's not in good health and has trauma. Mm. He says, regardless of medical surgeries, you're gonna have back problems the rest of your life. And Shane turned and looked at Vic and said, I don't receive this. Ooh, wow. He says, I believe God's wow. gonna heal me with a miracle. Mm -hmm. And so here a doctor may have given you a report, stand against that report. The doctor may have the facts, but the truth is by his stripes, yes. you're healed. Yes. Don't give up, N-E-G-U, never ever give up. 
You're just one prayer away from that 911 moment when heaven breaks in and your miracle happens. You become a walking, living testimony. In Acts 3, there was a man. Yeah. He was crippled from his mother's womb, right. carried daily. Mm -hmm. But one day, Peter and John came by. Silver and gold have we none, but such as we have. Give we this. So what was the diagnosis when he examined him after the miracle? Just in a line here. All the bones in Shane's back when Vic, the chiropractor, examined him on that bed, all the bones were back in alignment. All the blood flow was now flowing. He had pink skin where it was white, where there was no blood flow. Everything was perfect. And that night we did a workout in the cell with water bags that we'd made from the sink and a broom handle. And we did dips on the showers and push-ups. Mm. And Shane was 100% healed. And the rabbi came by the next day. And I told the rabbi of the miracle. And he says, well, that's because there's a good hard bed in there in the prison cell. <laughs> and at that point, it was a defining moment because here I am Jewish. Mm -hmm. And the rabbi denies the supernatural God of the Old Testament. Yet I call on this Messiah, Jesus, and I'm not even born again. And God answers he my was prayer healed. in front of a chiropractor. Let's stop right there and let me tell you, I think we have your attention by now, but what happened next is truly, truly supernatural. Don't miss it. We'll be right back with David Herbie. Call now and get David Harabedian's exclusive and brand new six-part audio CD set, Freedom in the Glory, plus his bonus reference card, Hope Shield. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9804. David Harabedian spent 20 years in a literal prison. Bondage can come in many forms. But the good news is there's hope and freedom. Here are the keys. David has prepared a brand new and exclusive audio teaching course just for you. David, with musical accompaniment by his wife, Joanna, will cover these topics in his six-part audio CD teaching series. In CD one, Return to God's Spiritual Penthouse, David shares that Jesus paid the price for you to live with God in the highest place, above the problems of this world as a citizen of heaven. In CD two, Freedom in the Glory, David shares how you can be set free from physical, spiritual, emotional, relational, mental, even a religious bondage. In CDs three and four, Setting Hope Free, David shares how hope deferred is an invisible weapon that the enemy deploys against you to derail your destiny. In CD five, what the Bible says about tongues. David shares how tongues release heaven's will into your life. And in CD six, Sons of God Arise, David shares how you can receive the full power, authority, and glory of God. Plus, you will also receive David's bonus Hope Shield reference card. This card includes powerful prayers and decrees and five steps to help maintain and restore your supernatural hedge of protection. Are you ready to be free from your own private prison? God set me free. He's going to set you free. Don't miss out on getting David Harabedian's exclusive and brand new six part audio CD set, Freedom in the Glory, plus his bonus reference card, Hope Shield. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9804. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9804 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Welcome back to Something More. I'm here with David Herbedian, and we are walking through his miraculous story. David, I, I know shortly after that healing miracle that was totally unexpected for you, you out of compassion, you said the prayer, but you watched it right in front of your eyes. What an impact. Right after that, you did give your heart to the Lord and, and, and became a believer in Messiah Jesus. And man, several weeks later, 
you had a visitation. Yeah, I had a visitation in the cell in Leavenworth Penitentiary when I was there doing those the, the prison time. And I had been born again, and it was the night before I went to sentencing. It was June 6th, 1990. Oh. Oh. And I thought, I'm going to go get sentenced alone at this point, with not with my co-defendants, and I was the first in the gauntlet. And there was no anointing, there was no unction, just a thought, just a thought you need to get down on your knees and pray. Mm. And I got down on one knee. I had Halfway. fully surrendered. <laughs> and the Lord prompted me to get down on both knees. So I got down on both knees on that cold prison floor in Building 63 in Leavenworth Penitentiary. Mm. And my co-defendant and the other person was looking at two life sentences was there. And they felt pity for me. Oh. And they said, we'll join you in prayer. And I began to pray, God, I'm going to sentencing tomorrow. Just the things, it was just words. and. And it was about two minutes. I just didn't have any more words. And I got ready to get up. And when I did, the Holy Spirit flooded that cell with his presence. Wow. The atmosphere changed. Became, the atmosphere in the prison cell suddenly was invaded by heaven into the earth. A breach had happened between heaven and earth. And he entered the prison cell in a tangible presence. And all of a sudden, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and I began to speak in other tongues and all of a sudden I had the mind of Christ and all of a sudden before us in front of the shower in this 8 by 16 prison cell with the cockroaches all of a sudden a figure appears before us in a white robe and we knew it was Jesus. Now this wasn't a vision, a dream or whatever for you. Everybody in the cell saw this. All three of us saw yeah. it and yeah. Big George was off in the corner six foot three done 26 out of 30 years in prison, and he was balled up in the fetal position because the presence of God convicts us of our sin. Mm. And nobody in God's presence can play games mm. when you're in his presence. And so I'm speaking in tongues, and what's coming out of my mouth in English in prayers is in Vic's mind in English, and it's his mind thoughts coming out of my mouth in English, then I'm sealing it in tongues. He's getting full interpretation of tongues and interpreting it back into English. And in 48 hours, almost every one of those prayers was answered down to the jot mm -hmm. and tittle. I believe this is a portion of the mind of Christ mm -hmm. where we're mm -hmm. one mind, mm -hmm. one accord. We have the same thought. They will all speak the same things. And so what happened was this after 15 minutes, Jesus had left the prison cell. Mm -hmm. He dissipated, and all of a sudden, a white cloud appeared on the floor the size of a man's hand. Mm -hmm. And I looked and I heard the words, test the spirits. Oh. And so I said, do you know Jesus? To the cloud. To the yeah. cloud. I yeah. pointed to the cloud, Ooh. do you know Jesus? And the minute I said Jesus, it sparked gold and platinum, and it began to flood the cell. And it became about 18 inches in depth, and I walked out into the cloud. It was like a child playing with an adult. <laughs> and every time I said, Jesus, Jesus would spark gold and platinum. And I would feel like static electricity on my legs. And it was fun. And I heard the words, drink from the cloud. Mm. So I reached into the cloud. And you know, we need to have childlike faith. Right. Here I was a drug dealer and a jet thief. And now I'm playing with the presence of God. <laughs> and he's having fun with me. And it would take nine months before I would find this was the Shekinah glory fire of God and it's throughout scripture. And as I picked up the cloud and I got ready to drink, it would spring back into itself. Mm -hmm. I'm bent over, it would spring back into itself. It was tangible, you could feel it. And then I realized I need to humble myself. I need to kneel into the cloud. Mm -hmm. When I did, now I'm in the cloud. I drank from the cloud three times and the presence of God went down into my lungs, went up into my sinuses and I was healed instantly with this warmth and I no longer had sinus problems, which I'd had for mm -hmm. years. And as I got up out of the cloud, the cloud of his presence stayed all night till 6 a.m. In the dark, we could see it. And when I got up, I went to court that day and God was with me. Wow. Is it safe to say that was an, uh, something that impacted you for the very rest of your life? Well, what's interesting about that, that's no, not the only time that I've experienced the cloud, but that's the most significant and impacted. But what it caused me to realize, Donna, is God wants us to have the faith of a child. Yes. yes. And children see God clearly. 
the pure in heart will see God. And He wants us to feel and know His presence. Yeah, we are not about manifestations. I'm into transformation, transformed lives. Yes. That's what I love to see is transformed lives. But if manifestations accompanies that, mm -hmm. we welcome it. Yes. But if it's yes. manifestation without transformation, not so much. Well, you know what? We've got a couple minutes left, and I want to make sure that you have time to pray for people. Because I said at the beginning of the program, you are a man that we're even locked away physically, but you found the true meaning of freedom. And you say something, David, that just lit me up. You said, you know what? I was in a physical prison for 20 years, but bondage comes in so many forms. And I just know that people that are watching this program, their story's not going to be like yours, but they have bondages. They have things in their life that they need to be set free from. And you say that they can be free today. Will you minister to them in these last couple of minutes? Absolutely. You may not have been in a prison cell, but you might be bound with the shackles of shame on your ankles or the handcuffs of hatred. You might have been in the Bastille of bitterness. You might have been in the penitentiary of pride or the lockdown of lust. God loves you just the way you are. He did it for David Herabedian a former jet thief and a cocaine trafficker. And he did it while I was yet still a sinner. He'll do it for you today because he loves you Amen. just the way you are, yeah. but he loves you way too much to leave you in your current condition. He, you may have tried a 12 step program. Today, God wants to give you a one step yes. Holy Ghost program. Yes. Just say these words. Messiah Jesus, I need you. I need you as my savior. I cannot save myself. I need freedom. I receive you now. I receive forgiveness. I break the power of addiction right now. I cancel the sin debt by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the Ruach HaKodesh. I declare divine deliverance and spontaneous reintegration in every area where your souls have been oh. fractured. And I speak the belt of truth to come upon you in brand new armor. Just so God put brand new spiritual armor on his warriors. Mm -hmm. And he's restored you this day by his goodness and his love. Yes, yes. Amen. David, thank you so much for being with us on Something More. What a pleasure to hear what God has done. And what a wonderful thing to know that he can do the same and will do the same for you. Please join us again next time on Something More.